Since Xamarin Forms, I think 3.0, we have a visual state manager. So basically what that does is each control now has a couple of states like disabled, normal, focused, and one other that I can think of right now. And whenever it reaches that state, you can apply styling to it. So you just define your style and whenever that control gets focused, it will apply that style automatically. Um, you can also have like custom states with, um, you know, uh, other library creators can hook in um, custom states. So that's pretty awesome. Um, and I got a question from my great friend Hendrik, who is a member of my channel. And, um, you know, he is in the lead developer tier. So he gets to request topics for videos and I prioritize them. So here is a topic from him. And he had a little bit of trouble um, with working with the Visual State Manager. So this video is for you. Let's go check out what it's all about. To show you how to work with the Visual State Manager, we are just going to open up a file new Xamarin Forms project, like you see on screen right now. On the left, you can see the XAML, and on the right, you can see my Android emulator showing that same thing. Um, so this is what you'll get out of the box whenever you're using Visual Studio for Mac or Visual Studio 2019 on Windows. Um, so let's just get cracking straight away. And here we are going to change this title right here to be Visual State Manager Sample. Save that. And with Hot Reload, it will reload our page immediately and it will show up um, without having to stop and restart our application. And in fact, this is going to be how I'm going to create this demo because everything I will show you in this video can be done in pure XAML. So that's pretty awesome. Um, you can all do it in code as well. In fact, if you want to like trigger states yourself, then that is definitely something that you would need to do in code. But I will just show you how to use how to get started with the visual state manager. So this is going to be all XAML and hot reload is going to help us um, stay focused and um, give us that sweet dev inner loop. Okay, enough with the marketing talk. Um, I'm going to implement first a sample entry. So I'm going to remove all of this and just do an entry here. And let's give that a text because we're not going to enter something ourselves. So let's make it something random like um, please subscribe to my channel. You know, maybe you're watching this channel and you think, hey, Gerald, I like you. Let's subscribe to this channel and support you a little bit. That would be awesome. Um, so do that. And in here, I can say visual state manager dot visual state groups. So in here, I can specify multiple groups. So within Xamarin Forms, a couple of groups are um, defined by default. And those are the normal, disabled, focused and selected. So you can do states for, you know, whenever a control is normal. So whenever you just look at it and nothing weird is going on, it's not selected, it's not focused, not anything. You probably always want to have that normal state in there because, you know, whenever then uh, if you focus something and then you unfocus it, it will go back to that normal state. So basically that is like the placeholder where it will um, keep all the details default values for the control that you want to apply these state to. Now, if you're using maybe custom controls or there are a couple of controls built into Xamarin Forms that specify additional states um, or, you know, as a library maintainer, you also have the possibility to define even more states or so maybe if you're using a third party control, then they have defined their own states. Please check out the documentation on the visual state manager or the third party control that you're using um, for more guidance on that. But I will show you now with the, um, you know, just in the box Xamarin Forms solutions. Inside of these groups, we can uh, specify a visual state group that is um, no surprise. Inside that visual state group, we can have a visual state. And here is where those names come into play. So you have to use these kind of magic strings um, for the group names for the for the actual states that is not ideal. But you know, that's the way it is. So we're just going to uh, add the normal one here. Now you can apply um, your own customization to this. So you know, we're looking at an entry here. And uh, we can say visual state dot setters. And there we go. And we can say, okay, I want to have a setter for the property um, background color. And let's make it a value of, you know, let's make it something pretty. 
yellow and there we go and if i save now you will see the entry come up and it, because it's the normal state you can see the background color is yellow but if you do not want to if you want to just have the default values in here you can just remove all of this basically and just have this normal one in here but you want to have this normal one in here because if you're going to define a visual state as we will see in a second uh, where we do something with the focused um, and you unfocus it it will not go back to the normal state if you you don't have one defined so that's a pro tip right here so let's just have a look at the thing that I'm mentioning here so we are having another visual state with the uh, no yeah is it a focused focused there we go and close this one and here we actually want to have that you know visual state setters um, you can see this very much looks like how you would define styles. In fact, you can declare this also in like your resource dictionary. If that is something you're interested in, check out the video that is appearing on your screen right now. Um, and, you know, if you want to have a video more precisely on how to work with these visual state manager and styles and everything together, please let me know in the comments and I will be making a video for you next. So here we have the setters and we do a setter for uh, the property background color again. And we're going to set the value to red this time and close that one. So if we save this and I go over to my app here on the right and I'm going to focus this entry, you can see that it um, turns red. And now if I unfocus it, it will go to normal. So let me just quickly show you if we remove the normal one here, save it, it will reload. And now we can do the focus again, so it will turn red. But when I unfocus, it stays red because, you know, that normal visual state is not there. So it doesn't know how to go back to its normal state. So uh, let's just put this back. And this is basically how you would implement a very basic form of like the visual state groups here. So as you can see, again, this can be very verbose, like doing it in line. Um, so you probably want to look at moving this to your resources. Please refer to the video description where you can find a video on how to work with resources. Um, and in fact, we're going to see that with the next example I have in mind. So um, let's just keep this entry right here as it is. And I'm going to add a collection view because this is going back to the question that my dear friend Hendrik has um, asked me. So let's go back to this collection view. And in fact, I want to set the selection mode uh, because, you know, that's something we want to do to single. You can also select multiples. So if you've not worked with collection view before, this is the new version of the list view. Basically, you want to check this out because it's more performant. You can do more layout things. It's pretty awesome. Look into the collection view. You want to see a video dedicated to the collection view? Let me know in the comments and I will make a video for you. Um, so here we go. And what we want to do, so this is just about, you know, doing the visual state manager. So I'm going to um, add some items here in my XAML. And the way to do that is collection view, item source, there we go, item source. And I'm going to do an X array here. Uh, we should give that a type, which is of X type. This is kind of funny looking um, syntax if you're not used to it. I totally agree. And typically this is not something that you want to do. But, you know, this is a nice way of providing some sample data without confusing you with, um, you know, data binding and that kind of stuff. So here we go. Add a couple of those. Three, two, actually, let's just keep it at three that will get the sample across. So if I save this, you can see the collection view is down here coming up. Um, so I have some data. And the other thing I want to do to show you this example properly is um, inside the collection view, we're going to create a item template. So basically that is a template that will be applied to each item in our collection view. So, you know, whenever it's going to render out this new item of 111, it's going to look at this item template and it's going to wrap all this stuff into this template and for, um, you know, the second item in here as well. So, you know, that's the way how you can style basically each item in your collection view. Also works for list view, other things. Um, again, if this is something you're interested in, I can repeat this all day. Just let me know in the comments and I will make a video for that. 
um, and we should supply it with a data template and here I can say do a stack layout um, to just stack those things and put a label in here so basically what I'm going to do is show these items inside a label I'm going to give this a name you will see why later um, and I'm just going to give this the um, you know value label here we go and here I'm actually going to have to do a little bit of binding uh, data binding so here we go data binding dot and dot just means you know it's going to use like the actual object that is um, um, in here so if this were a complex object then you would have to specify like the property name of the the property that you want to show there but in this case our object is like a a regular string right so I just want to use the entire object which can be done with dot so that's what's going on here and then close this tag and if I save that it will look absolutely the same but now it's wrapped inside of a stack layout and a label in fact let's make this look a little bit nicer and align this at the center so there we go and now if I click one of those you can see that it selects this whole thing in orange because you know that is like the default Android theme um, but what we want to do here is um, change that background that is selected and um, for this to work because you know the collection view implements actually those visual states and it has the selected state uh, but for this to work properly um, you will have to declare a style and uh, with that the visual groups and everything inside of your resources so um, here we go I'm going to assume that you have a little bit of knowledge about the resources here because else this will go pretty fast but again uh, the video will pop up again um, there is a video about resources and resource dictionaries that I have recorded already so um, go check that out if you want a little bit of background information um, I'm going to uh, declare this on this page level you can also declare the resources on your application level or e even inside of this stack layout if that's what you want uh, we're going to do the resources here and then I'm going to declare a style and I'm going to have this have a target type of stack layout so what this is going to do this style is going to be applied to the stack layout in my data template here all right so let's scroll back up and define that style and inside of your style you can actually have a setter for property of visual state manager dot visual state manager groups so here we go there we have that and inside of that now we can basically just um, you know define the whole thing as uh, we did before so we can just say um, visual state group and we can say visual state and we should of course have the normal one to have it go back to normal so let's go back to this one have this have normal there we go and we want one for the selected in this case so not the focused but a selected and um, close that one here we go format that nicely and we're going to say back whoops uh, visual state setter there's a lot of example going on here and the actual setter is going to be property background color uh, so this is the background color of our stack layout and that's going to have a value of um, I don't know let's make it yellow again let's make it something pretty so here we go setter property background color I think this should be good IntelliSense doesn't seem to agree with me but let's see if we um, click an actual item here okay so this is not working and I already noticed here in our little um, IntelliSense things why because apparently we have to wrap this into a visual state group list um, so outside of our visual state group we need to determine a visual state group list um, so whenever we you use this in a style you need to wrap this into a group list um, of course there is usages for group lists and certain groups because you can also give this group a name um, so you know then you can easily switch between groups and that kind of stuff that's a little bit more advanced uh, so I'm not going to go over this in this video but if that's something that you're interested in please let me know and I will make a video for you 
Um, so now save this again, see if that works better. So IntelliSense agrees with me a little bit more now. And whenever we click this, you can see it now does yellow. So that is pretty cool. Now for the question of Hendrik, um, it's kind of specific and you don't see the actual error in air quotes, if you will, um, in, in this case, because I think he has a little bit of more complex layout where you maybe have an image and, and multiple labels. And what he was saying is like, um, okay, I have updated now the background color of my stack layout, but I do not update all the other things. One feature of the visual states is that you can now also provide it with a target. So if you remember from a little bit earlier, I gave my name uh, no, I gave my label a name here. It's the value label. And what we can do now, so earlier, if you also wanted to style this label, then you had to basically copy this this whole block and, um, you know, have it have another target type because it should be a label and then you should do the property here and it could be something different. Um, but what we're doing now that as long as something is scoped within this stack layout, so for uh, our case, um, our label, uh, we can do it like with the same visual state right here. Um, this is a really, really cool feature built by a fantastic guy. Um, he is talking to you right now. So, you know, I might be a little biased. And we can now copy this setter. And what we can do is actually set the target name on it. So this can be the name of a control that uh, falls within the stack layout um, scope. So in this case, if we go back, scroll down a little bit here, uh, we can see we have our stack layout. So this is the scope of the stack layout. And inside of our stack layout, we have a label called a value label. So uh, if we scroll back up and we do this setter and we have the target name, I can input here the value label. And the only thing you need to know about the property now is it works with only bindable properties. Um, so you have to specify like the label dot um, text color here. So let's set the text color and we can set the value to red. So here we go, save that and it should update. And whenever I focus something now, you can see that the item um, turns yellow, but not only that, the label will also do um, a, a red text. So if you have any more controls in here, then you know you can just access them with that target name. Um, as long as you think of that, you um, have to specify the property with like the um, control that you are accessing. So this has to be the control name. Uh, so this could also be entry or uh, um, I don't know, image, something like that. Um, but in our case, it's label and then the label dot text color. So, you know, if you want to find out what this is, just go into your um, code behind basically and you can just see, okay, label dot text color um, and just do not do the property here. So text color, you can also do, um, I don't know, text type as long as you don't do the property here. So that's all stuff that you can um, specify here. And that is all you need to know on using the Visual State Manager and using the Visual State Manager target name to make your XAML less verbose. Okay, so I think that was a lot to take in, right? There was a lot of XAML going on. Uh, luckily, we have Hot Reload, which makes it very much easier because, you know, imagine that we had to stop and restart our application each time. Wow, this video would be three times as long. Um, so now you have some sense of how to work with the Visual State Manager. Um, I can imagine you have some questions still watching this. Please let me know in the comments if you do, and I will be um, doing my best to answer them. I also repeat it over and over again, but I'll do it once more if there is something that you want uh, a little bit more um, of an extensive explanation about, please let me know. I will do a video on that. Um, other than that, if you've liked this video, please hit the like button, hit that subscribe button. If you like um, other things on my channel or you want to be notified of content as soon as it comes out, then ding that little bell, important to know, and I'll be seeing you for my next video.